Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, back with another two minute Capture One video. We're gonna work on one of the coolest tools in Capture One today, and that is the color balance tool. We're gonna be working on this image of Jennifer, which you might recognize from our Photoshop series. If you're not, and you'd like to see what we did to add the sun to this image, as well as some other foreground elements, I'll put a link in the description below. If you're using the default workspace for Capture One, you'll find the color balance tool under this menu, color balance. You can also right click anywhere, Add Tool, and choose Color Balance. Note you can add more than one copy of this control at any one time. I don't really care for the control to be this small, so you can actually look at each one individually, or you can actually make the control larger. The idea is pretty simple. I usually start in the shadows, and I move my cursor around the hue bias in the middle until I find something that I like. Sometimes it's a happy accident on the warm side, but almost always it's on the cooler side for the shadows. I find something I like, I start to make smaller and smaller movements until I think I'm where I'd like it to be. I can then also adjust the saturation of the color I've chosen and the brightness. Note that you can use this brightness slider without having a bias for color in the middle, and this is a great way to lift the shadows if you would like to use something other than curves or another method. Once I'm happy here, noting where my position is here, I'll go into mid-tones and I almost always go the opposite direction. This seems to work out pretty well most of the time, and it's kind of lazy man's color theory because you know that you're going to have complementary colors this direction. Typically, I don't play with the highlight control much because I don't like what it does to bright objects in the scene like the sun, but that's personal preference. The last place I go is the master. This is the one I make sure that when I'm done, the skin tones in my scene look good. Sometimes I'll take it all the way up to make sure there's not a green or red cast of the skin, and then I'll go over here and lower the saturation of that so that it doesn't look so insane. Once you're done, you can go here, and save your preference. This will give you a preset you can use in the future. By default, the name of the preset will be the name of the current image. We can always change that to whatever you'd like. This is also where you would go to copy your presets to another machine or to back them up. As a best practice, I tend to prefer putting all of my color changes on a separate layer. I'll create a new filled layer and then go ahead and play with the color bias for the image. There's so much power in this tool and so many cool things you can do to create your own looks and your own presets. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below, and please be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and I'll try and kick out more of these videos in the coming days. Everybody stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.